Pacific Ocean is massive, so vast it covers a third of the entire planet. But beneath its endless blue lies a mystery that scientists have struggled to explain for decades. Why do the Pacific's creatures grow so unbelievably huge? Crabs the size of trash can lids, squids with eyes bigger than your head, isopods that look like something from a horror movie crawling across the sea floor like armored tanks. Even ordinary animals, worms, spiders, and starfish become monstrous when they live in the Pacific depths. It's called deep sea gigantism, and nowhere on Earth is it more extreme than in the Pacific. From the freezing trenches of the Mariana to the dark plains off Japan, this ocean seems to supersize everything that lives in it. But why? What's down there that makes creatures evolve into monsters? To understand, we have to go into a world of darkness, pressure, and hunger, where evolution plays by completely different rules. Down here, survival isn't about speed or strength. It's about endurance. And in the deep Pacific, the only way to survive is to grow big. The Pacific Ocean isn't just vast, it's deep beyond imagination. The Mariana Trench, sitting in the Western Pacific, is the deepest point on Earth, plunging more than 36,000 feet below the surface. That's deeper than Mount Everest is tall. Down there, the pressure is over a thousand times greater than what you feel at sea level, and the temperature hovers just above freezing. Sunlight doesn't exist in this world. To a human, it would mean instant death, but to evolution, it's an opportunity. In this crushing darkness, survival demands radical change. Every organism, from shrimp to squid, must adapt to forces strong enough to crush steel. Their bodies evolve to become larger, slower, and tougher. The giant amphipods found in the Pacific trenches are a perfect example. Their shallow water cousins are barely the size of a fingernail. But in the deep Pacific, they grow as long as your hand, with exoskeletons built to endure the weight of an ocean pressing down on them. Then there's the giant isopod, nature's deep sea tank. On land, its relatives are tiny pill bugs that hide under rocks. Down here, they've evolved into half-meter-long armored scavengers, with claws powerful enough to tear apart whale carcasses that drift to the seafloor. Even smaller creatures like worms and snails are stretched into bizarre new forms, translucent, slow, and built from biochemistry that defies normal life. Their very DNA operates differently to handle pressure that would destroy most living cells. The deeper you go, the more extreme everything becomes. Every inch below the surface is a new level of evolution's madness, a realm where the rules of life twist and warp into something unrecognizable. Down here, the impossible doesn't just survive, it thrives. So what's actually happening here? Why does the deep Pacific turn small creatures into giants? Why do we find monster-sized crabs, squid, and worms thriving where almost nothing else survives? It all comes down to a mix of cold, pressure, and scarcity. Three forces that have shaped life in the Pacific's hidden depths for millions of years. Down there, evolution isn't about speed or aggression, it's about endurance. Let's start with the cold. Deep sea water in the Pacific stays just above freezing around two degrees Celsius, and that chill changes everything. The lower the temperature, the slower an organism's metabolism runs. Think of it like hitting pause on life itself. Every heartbeat, every breath, every movement slows to a crawl. And with that slow pace comes longevity. A longer lifespan means more time to grow, even if it's gradual. That's why many deep sea species are both ancient and enormous. Some amphipods, worms, and crustaceans in the Pacific can live several decades, unheard of for their surface relatives. Time, for them, is an ally, not an enemy. Then comes the pressure. The deeper you go, the heavier the ocean becomes, pressing down with over a thousand times the force we experience at the surface. For a creature living in that environment, every cell must adapt. The easiest way to survive that kind of crushing force is to grow larger. A bigger body spreads pressure more evenly, creating natural stability. That's why the Pacific trenches are home to creatures that seem oversized, almost alien. Evolution built them this way, massive, dense, and flexible at the same time. Their cell membranes and proteins are chemically tuned to resist collapse. The result is a world of slow-moving giants perfectly balanced between strength and fragility. And finally, there's food, or rather, the lack of it. The deep Pacific is a desert of darkness, 
With no sunlight, there are no plants, and the only source of nourishment is what scientists call marine snow, a slow, constant drizzle of dead plankton, fish remains, and organic debris sinking from above. In this environment, size becomes a survival strategy. Larger creatures can travel farther in search of food, store more fat, and wait out starvation. Take the giant isopod, a creature that can go more than five years without a meal. When food finally arrives, it devours everything it can and then slips into a near hibernation state until the next feast. It's brutal, efficient, and a perfect adaptation for a world where abundance never lasts. Over millions of years, the deep Pacific has turned these harsh rules into blueprints for survival. Cold slows time, pressure shapes form, and hunger rewards the patient. Together, they've sculpted a realm where gigantism isn't a mystery, it's the standard. And it's not limited to scavengers or insects. The ocean's greatest predators have taken the same path, evolving into colossal, otherworldly hunters that roam the abyss. One of the most famous is also one of the most elusive, a creature so massive and mysterious that, for centuries, sailors thought it was only a legend. Meet the colossal squid. Forget everything you know about squids. The colossal squid isn't your average calamari. It's a living leviathan. It lives thousands of feet below the surface of the Pacific Ocean in a world of perpetual darkness, where the pressure could crush a nuclear submarine like a soda can. And yet, somehow, it thrives. Measuring up to 45 feet long and weighing nearly a ton, this monster is one of the largest invertebrates ever discovered. Its body isn't built for grace, it's built for dominance. With eyes the size of basketballs, the largest of any creature on Earth, it can detect the faintest glimmer of movement, the ghostly shimmer of bioluminescent prey drifting in the abyss. Unlike its close relative, the giant squid, which prefers slightly shallower waters, the colossal squid is the undisputed master of the deep Pacific. Its body is thicker, heavier, and far more muscular. Its tentacles are shorter, but vastly stronger, each one lined with sharp, swiveling hooks that can rotate 360 degrees, designed to latch onto flesh and never let go. These aren't tools for hunting small fish. They're weapons forged by evolution for taking down large, struggling prey. Every part of its anatomy screams one purpose, ambush. In a place where light never reaches, the colossal squid has turned invisibility into its greatest weapon. Down here, speed doesn't win, patience does. The colossal squid drifts motionless in the black, conserving energy, waiting for something, anything, to wander too close. Then, in a sudden burst, its hooked arms shoot forward like harpoons, wrapping around its victim with terrifying precision. The prey doesn't even have time to react before it's dragged toward a beak capable of slicing through bone and cartilage with ease. What follows isn't a fight, it's a dismantling. The squid's razor-sharp beak and tongue-like radula tear the prey apart piece by piece, all in total darkness. And what hunts a monster like this? Very little. The only known predator capable of challenging the colossal squid is the sperm whale, another deep-sea giant molded by the same hostile environment. Their battles are the stuff of legend, unseen by human eyes but immortalized by the scars found on whales that make it back to the surface. Circular gouges and slashes left by the squid's hooked tentacles. It's a war waged in darkness, between two titans born of the same abyss. The Pacific creates both monsters, and the beasts brave enough to fight them. Not all giants are born from brutality. Some are born from brilliance. Meet the giant Pacific octopus, the largest of its kind, and one of the smartest creatures in the entire ocean. In the cold water stretching from Japan to Alaska, this elusive giant moves with quiet purpose. It can reach over 30 feet across when fully extended, with arms strong enough to crush crabs, twist open jars, and pry apart clamshells like toys. But what truly sets it apart isn't its strength, it's its mind. Scientists have watched these creatures escape sealed tanks, unscrew lids, and navigate mazes with ease. Some even learn to recognize individual human faces, greeting familiar divers with curiosity and splashing water at strangers they don't trust. 
Its body may look alien, but inside is one of the most complex nervous systems in the animal kingdom, with over half a billion neurons, most of them distributed throughout its arms. Each limb can act independently, tasting, touching, and deciding, a living network of brains working together. Evolution gave this octopus more than size. It gave it awareness. Its size, in fact, fuels that intelligence. A larger body allows for a larger brain, a more intricate system of neurons, and greater control of movement. In the dark, ever-shifting terrain of the Pacific seabed, intelligence becomes a survival tool as valuable as armor or teeth. The giant Pacific octopus uses camouflage and texture-shifting skin to vanish into coral or mimic rocks in an instant. Its adaptability is legendary, a creature that changes shape, color, and behavior with the precision of a seasoned illusionist. Yet for all its brilliance, its life burns fast and bright. Most giant Pacific octopuses live only four to five years. When a female lays her eggs, she stops eating, guarding them until they hatch, a final act of devotion that ends in her death. It's a tragic trade-off, a burst of intelligence and strength that ends in self-sacrifice. But that's the Pacific's way. Nothing here lasts forever. Every life, no matter how brilliant, feeds another. Still, the octopus proves something profound. In these vast cold waters, gigantism isn't just about survival. It's about adaptation. Every creature becomes the best version of what the deep demands. Beneath the Pacific surface lies a landscape few have ever seen, the abyssal plains. Flat, endless stretches of seafloor that look more like alien deserts than part of our own planet. Down here, sunlight hasn't touched in millions of years. The temperature hovers just above freezing, and the pressure? It's crushing. Thousands of pounds per square inch pressing against every surface. This is one of the harshest environments on Earth. And yet, it's home to some of the largest and strangest creatures ever discovered. Take the giant tube worms clustered around hydrothermal vents. They live in a world where temperatures can swing from near freezing to boiling in seconds, feeding not on plants or prey, but on bacteria that convert toxic chemicals, hydrogen sulfide and methane, into life. They can grow over eight feet long, anchored in colonies that look like forests of white and red spires rising from the black sea floor. There are no eyes, no mouths, no sunlight, just chemistry and survival. It's life rewritten from scratch. Then there are the deep sea sea spiders, not insects, but marine arthropods that crawl across the ocean floor like silent machines. Near the surface, their cousins are barely the size of a thumbnail, but in the Pacific Abyss, they grow as large as dinner plates, their legs long and delicate, moving with eerie grace. The oxygen-rich cold water allows their bodies to expand far beyond normal limits. It's the same rule repeated again and again. Slow, cold, massive. The deeper you go, the bigger life becomes. Down here, small simply doesn't survive. But there's another reason the Pacific breeds such giants of space. This ocean is beyond comprehension. It covers more area than all of Earth's land, combined billions of cubic kilometers of open, uncharted water. That vastness creates isolation. Populations split apart, evolve separately, and adapt in ways that seem almost experimental. In the Pacific, evolution runs wild without boundaries. It's nature's own laboratory, where time moves more slowly, distant stretches forever, and life keeps testing the limits of what's possible. Sometimes, those experiments create monsters. Other times, they create miracles. The Pacific isn't just huge, it's fragmented. Deep trenches, underwater mountains, and endless stretches of open water divide its realm into countless hidden worlds. Each trench, ridge, and volcanic basin acts like a barrier, separating species the same way mountain ranges separate life on land. These are the ocean's invisible borders, and within them, evolution begins to drift. When a small population becomes trapped inside one of these isolated zones, something extraordinary happens. They start evolving alone. No migration, no new genes, just isolation and time. Scientists call it insular gigantism, the same phenomenon that turned ordinary lizards into Komodo dragons when trapped on islands. But in the Pacific, these islands aren't made of rock and soil. They're underwater pockets of life, sealed off by miles of darkness and pressure. Cut off from predators, competition, or escape, 
Creatures in these isolated regions adapt in bizarre ways. They grow larger, stronger, and stranger, shaped entirely by their environment. That's how the Japanese spider crab became the largest arthropod on Earth, its legs stretching up to 12 feet across, spanning wider than a human car. Or how the giant Pacific jellyfish evolved to have a bell over seven feet wide, its translucent form drifting like a ghost through the deep, both beautiful and terrifying suspended in eternal silence. In the Pacific, isolation doesn't limit life. It amplifies it. But evolution's masterpiece is always fragile. For every species that thrives in its private abyss, countless others vanish at the slightest shift. A change in current, a rise in temperature, or a drop in oxygen can destroy a lineage that took billions of years to form. And now, those changes are coming faster than ever. The Pacific may have built its giants slowly, but in the modern world, it could lose them in an instant. For centuries, the giants of the Pacific lived beyond human reach, unseen, untouched, unbothered. But in the last hundred years, that's changed. Deep sea trawling, mining, and climate change are pushing into parts of the ocean that were once completely isolated. We're tearing up the very environments that made these creatures what they are. When deep sea habitats collapse, the giants vanish. Some, like the giant deep sea coral forests near Hawaii, have already been destroyed by industrial fishing nets. Others, like the colossal squid, are being found less frequently, not because they're gone, but because the fragile ecosystems they depend on are changing faster than they can adapt. Then there's temperature. The Pacific is warming. And with warmer water comes faster metabolism, meaning shorter lifespans and smaller bodies. Scientists are already observing that certain deep-sea species are shrinking. It's the slow undoing of millions of years of evolution. Gigantism, in a way, is nature's long-term investment. It takes patience, stability, and time. And humans are taking all three away. Still, the Pacific is vast beyond measure. There are trenches, canyons, and caves no one has ever explored. And in those shadows, evolution continues its work. For every species we lose, there are likely others we've never seen. Still growing, still adapting, still becoming giants. It's estimated that over 90% of the Pacific Ocean remains unexplored. Let that sink in. We know more about the surface of Mars than about the deep Pacific on our own planet. And every time scientists send down a new submersible or drone, they find something unbelievable. In 2019, researchers near the Mariana Trench discovered a gelatinous creature with a body nearly 12 feet long, moving like liquid silk. No one had ever seen anything like it before, and they still haven't identified it. In 2021, a remote rover captured footage of a ghostly fish with translucent skin and organs visible through its body, living 26,000 feet deep. Its size and resilience shocked scientists. And there are stories, unconfirmed but tantalizing, of sonar blips, movements, and silhouettes far larger than any known animal. Some say they're glitches. Others believe we're glimpsing the last of the ocean's undiscovered leviathans. Because if there's one place on Earth capable of hiding monsters, it's the Pacific. The Pacific Ocean doesn't just create life, it redefines it. Every inch of its depth is a challenge. Darkness, pressure, hunger, isolation. And yet, in that brutal environment, life doesn't shrink away. It grows. From the colossal squid stalking the deep trenches, to the giant octopus gliding through coastal caves, to the unseen titans lurking in the abyss, every one of them is proof of nature's ability to adapt, to survive, and to evolve beyond reason. Maybe that's why these creatures fascinate us so much. They're not just big, they're impossible living proof that life finds a way, even in places that should kill it instantly. The Pacific Ocean has been shaping monsters for millions of years, and it's still doing it now. Because down there, in the cold black depths where no light dares to reach, giants are still being born. If you found this journey through nature's power as haunting as it is humbling, make sure to like, subscribe, and join us again as we explore more of the mysteries that shape our world. Because sometimes the greatest stories are the ones the earth tells us.